What's going on to all my Netflix movie fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new early movie review and today we're discussing the new Netflix sci-fi film by the name of The Atom Project which will be coming to Netflix this coming Friday. I got the opportunity to check it out early courtesy of the fine folks over at Netflix and I'm really excited to let you all know if this sci-fi film starring Ryan Reynolds is worth watching all in this spoiler free review. Before we break it all down make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. I would absolutely love it if you all would come and join this awesome community filled with early movie reviews, TV reviews, live streams, and so much more. So make sure you're subscribed and you're hitting that notification bell. As you all can see on the screen now, if you enjoyed this spoiler-free movie review, well, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also share this review. But more importantly, once you've seen the film, What'd you think about it? I want to know your pros and your cons, your thoughts on the sci-fi elements, the family dynamic in this film, the performances. What were some things that didn't work for you all? And since we're talking Ryan Reynolds, if you've seen enough of his movies, what are your top three Ryan Reynolds films? Let's talk about that in the comments below. So going into The Atom Project, I was pretty excited for it. Number one, just last year, Ryan Reynolds and the director of this film, Sean Levy, just worked together and they did such a great job of working together. I love the collaboration they have. It kind of reminds me of how Tom Cruise and Christopher McQuarrie have such a good thing working right now. So I love the collaboration with these two and then going into this genre. If you know me long enough, you know how much I love sci-fi, but in particularly I love time travel, but time travel done right, that's not all convoluted and has a bunch of nonsense, which speaking of, the best time travel sci-fi story I've ever seen is on Netflix, and I suggest you all watch it if you haven't yet. It's the greatest of all time. I'm talking about Dark, so as I digress, check out Dark, but <laughs> neither here nor there. Love the collaboration of the two people of the film, the director and the actor. Love sci-fi and time travel. What did I think about it? Well, let's break it all down, starting off with my pros. I want to talk about Sean Levy, who I'm a fan of his work, man. Whether it be his time doing the, the Night of the Museum films, Real Steel is such an underrated film. I highly recommend you all give that a watch. And like I just said, he directed Free Guy last year, which was such a hit surprise. And also, he's executive producer of Stranger Things. What I love about Sean... He does such a great job of capturing fun, right? And not just fun, but family fun. I feel like people can watch The Adam Project, whether you're a kid, an adult, a teenager. Um, I feel like everyone can find something to take away from this film. More so, I'll, I'll talk about my favorite elements, which is the family dynamic. But just that 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 self-journey of figuring who you are out and going back and fixing your wrongs and correcting your wrongs and doing that while having the sci-fi elements. And again, the heart that this film has was just really flexible out and has such a great payoff. So I'm I'm just loving what Sean Levy is able to bring, whether it's again like shows like Stranger Things, give him, you know, the 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 brothers, the Duffel brothers, their influence on certain 80 vibes and the Goonies of the world, the ET of the world, which this film has some of those elements. So I'm just a big fan of his work and I really thought he had a strong direction in telling a sci-fi film, but also giving us something with some stakes and some heart. I really appreciate his direction. But let's talk a little bit about the narrative of this film without giving too much away if you all haven't seen the trailer or read the synopsis we have ryan reynolds who goes by adam reed in this film who comes from the future i believe it was 2050 to be exact he gets kind of caught up in this type of time travel conspiracy theory he wants to go back in time and try to figure things out he unfortunately crash lands in 2022 he runs to his younger self. At the same time, he has moments with his mother, played by Jennifer Gardner. He has some moments with his father, played by Mark Ruffalo. And then he has his love interest, played by Zoe Zaldana. And the thing I really enjoyed about this narrative, number one, I mentioned it's fun, it's entertaining. The sci-fi elements we'll get into a little bit later, but I, I enjoyed the action sequences that the film has to offer, whether it's Ryan Reynolds with his little, you know, lightsaber staff and, you know, the guns and the spaceships and the time travel. All that stuff was fun. The thing I love about this narrative, and the story in particular, is the family dynamic. Like I mentioned, Sean, Sean Levy really knows how to pull out the heartstrings. And when it comes to this film, without giving much of anything away, just putting myself in Ryan Reynolds' shoes, if I'm able to go back in time and interact with my younger self, and interact with my loved ones at that particular point in my life, I just love that, that narrative because there would be things I would want to fix, right? And just not giving too much away in the performances, but Ryan Reynolds, his character at this older point of his life in 2050, he has a lot of anger. He has a lot of, you know, he's an asshole, right? He has a lot of resentment and you find out why when you see the film. And I just love the fixing of those kind of character flaws that he gets to 
do in this film and then the arc that we get with not only his older self but his younger self and understanding why at that young age of 12 he's a bit of an asshole <laughs> to say the least and you understand why in the relationship between the parents which the best elements I, we did i wish we got more of it but seeing this reunion of 13 going on 30 between mark ruffalo and jennifer gardner again i wish they were in the film a little bit more more so mark ruffalo because he's really like focused on in the second and third act of the film but neither here nor there when we do get them on screen I absolutely love the conversation that Mark Ruffalo has with the older Adam, the younger Adam, the conversation he has with his wife, Jennifer Gardner, having the same reflection of how she interacts with her younger son, who again is an asshole, but also gets this really sweet moment with her older, uh, the older version of Adam later in the film that I thought was just so fantastic. So the thing I took away from this film, again, it's fun, it's it's flashy, it has sci-fi elements, it has time travel, it has gadgets and this, that, and the third, jokes, whatever the case may be. But the heart of this film, the family drama, the family dynamic was easily the best part of this film. But I do want to shine a light on the performances. Like I mentioned, I like Ryan Reynolds. I know a lot of people aren't the biggest fan because he does the same shtick. But I've always said, if you're good at something, keep doing it, right? I mean, he stretches his acting flexibilities every now and then. But I really had fun with Ryan Reynolds in this film. There were moments where I'm just like... My thing, and I'll talk about it later in my criticism, is I think Ryan Reynolds always needs like a sh like a person that's the opposite of him to kind of really highlight what he's good at, but he's playing him, like he's interacting with a younger version of himself, so it's like a mirror of two Ryan Reynolds in this film, but I did have fun with him. I think, again, Ryan Reynolds is an action star. We know it as Deadpool. He's been in the Blades. He's, you know, going to be in the MCU sooner rather than later, so he knows how to handle himself in action, but I really enjoyed the emotional beats that we get with Ryan Reynolds, showing you the acting abilities that he has, as as well as his younger counterpart played by this young up-and-coming actor Walker Stahlbell who plays the younger version of himself and I thought that the kid he did an okay job he is playing Ryan Reynolds right as as and again I think this is his first gig it is probably pretty hard as a young kid to be able to uh you know have the mannerisms the same personality as a, a, an actor that's been acting for 20 plus years but I thought he did a good job for the most part the best parts of the younger version of Ryan Reynolds to me were the second and the third act of the film when we dive deeper into my favorite element which is the family dynamic that we get in the film so again the jokes and stuff from the kid it's kind of hard to have this kid again be in the pseudo version the younger version of Ryan Reynolds but I thought that the emotional beats from that young kid did a good job and then like I mentioned again Jennifer Gardner and the reunion she has with Mark Ruffalo for my 13 30 uh 13 going on 30s fans I love them and I and I thought they were great parents that were you know displayed many different ranges of emotions and I really enjoyed their performances so again the highlight of this film is the heart of the movie but let's transition into my criticisms now I, I touched on it a little bit when it comes to Ryan Reynolds, I'm a big fan of his work, but I think he plays better when he has someone that's the opposite of him, right? And in this film, he's interacting. 90% of the film is him and his younger self. So it's just seeing like little Ryan Reynolds versus big Ryan Reynolds going back and forth, you know, bar for bar, joke for joke, assholery. Like they're both assholes for the first half of this film, which made it kind of hard for me to like the characters. But like I said, as the film moves on, we learn more about the older Adam, his relationship with Zoe Zeldana, his relationship with his mom mom and his dad I enjoyed more of that narrative than I did in the first half which was just like hey you're an asshole you're an asshole why are we assholes that stuff to me didn't really work that well because I think Ryan Reynolds again plays so much better when he has someone that's not you know necessarily has regret it has these quick little jokey jokes which again when he has his moments with his father Again, Mark Ruffalo wasn't playing the jokey joke. He was more of the concerned dad. So it played better for that dynamic versus, the, again, seeing two of the same characters doing the same thing for the first half wasn't my favorite element. There were some performances by the younger kid. Again, I thought that because, again, he's given the task to playing an old, a younger version of Ryan Reynolds. Some of those beats didn't work for me entirely, but I won't blame the kid because, again, if I'm not mistaken, this is his first gig. And for this being his first gig, a sci-fi action time travel film with these big stars, I think he did a good job for the most part. But there is an actor in this film that I'm a big fan of, Catherine Keener, who plays Maya in this film, who's somewhat of a villain of the movie. What a fantastic actress. She can play villain. Watch Incredibles 2, at least her, the voice acting there. But in this film, miscast entirely. I did not find her menacing. I didn't find her motives to be all that clear. And then I don't want to give too much away. But as I mentioned, this is a time travel film. So she goes back in time to try to stop Ryan Reynolds to do what he's trying to do in this film. And there's this deep fake scene 
Oh my goodness, was it so distracting because it was so terrible. I I, I know we've come a long way from the deep fake, right? And and Marvel and, and, and Star Wars have proven that we can have these, you know, actors make themselves look younger. But oh my goodness, when you see her in this film, when she's interacting with her younger self, those are some of the worst scenes to me. And again, everything that that character had to do in this film was just terrible to me. And then this breaks my heart because I love Zoe Zaldana. I did not enjoy the chemistry between her and Ryan Reynolds. You get towards a certain point in the film, it was fine and it was a great callback, but when when they interact in the film, I didn't find their chemistry to be all that strong and I thought that Zoe was just kind of overacting at scenes. So those were some characters. I love those actresses. Again, Catherine and Zoe, I love you all, but I just didn't think that the writing was all that great for you all, which brings me to my last point. There's about four or five writers in this film, and you can feel that in the parts of this movie. There's a lot of different tones, a lot of different jokes that didn't land, a lot of different sci-fi elements, which, I'm again, I love sci-fi, and the time travel explanation wasn't all that great for me. Again, the family dynamic was fantastic. The sci-fi was a little weak and had a lot of plot holes. I don't want to say which ones because there's obviously spoilers, but I wasn't the biggest fan of some of the writing, and particularly the sci-fi elements of this movie. But those are kind of my main criticisms. I talked about my pros. Let me give you all my overall score and if you should watch it. But before we do that, make sure if you haven't already to like the video, share it, leave your thoughts in the comments. Overall, The Adam Project at its best is when it focuses on the family dynamic between Ryan Reynolds and his younger Himself and his mom and his dad and explaining why he is the way he is later on in his life and addressing that as a younger kid. I love those elements. It was fun. I think Sean Levy does such a great job of bringing in those fun elements. I wasn't the biggest fan of some of the sci-fi time travel elements and I mentioned how I, I thought that Catherine and Zoe unfortunately just didn't work for me but overall I had fun with it. I, I recommend you all watch this with your family or if you like these type of films give it a watch yourself. I'm going to give of the Adam Project a three out of five. I love the family dynamic, but the sci-fi elements and those two performances to me really kind of took me out of the film at points. But overall, I still recommend you all give it a watch. And when you do, let me know your pros, your cons, your favorite moments, least favorite moments, your top three Ryan Reynolds films. Let's talk about that in the comments below. If you stuck around to this point in the video, I appreciate you. Again, a friendly reminder to like, share, comment, and come and join the community by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Hope you enjoyed this review hope you're staying safe as you can see on the screen now subscribe to my channel check out my other content we'll catch you on the next video